What's going on guys, Jordan here. So the $2 trillion stimulus bill has passed the Senate and the bill has been made public, all 880 pages of it. So I went through it and in this video, I picked out a few things that I think might be helpful to you guys in regards to stop paying your mortgage payments right now and how you can do that if you're in a bad situation right now. Now I just wanna preface this guys with, I'm not an expert. This is just someone from the public, I'm a real estate agent. I just went through it as any normal person would, looked at the things that I picked out of the bill that I think are really interesting, and I'm bringing that to you guys here. I'm not an expert in any way, and you should absolutely download, I'll link it below actually, the entire 880 page bill, so you guys can read through it yourself and make your own conclusions from this. But I thought I'd just, you know, if you don't wanna read through 880 pages or go through it the way I did, you guys can just watch this video and maybe get some information out of it. So here we go, guys. If you have a federally backed mortgage, so a mortgage that was issued from the government, 98% of you have that right now on a residential property with one to four units, that's um, condos, co-ops, um, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA mortgages, VA, VA loans, all that stuff, 98% of you have a government-backed loan. So if you have a government-backed loan right now, one to four unit property, which most of this applies to most of you, you can actually apply for forbearance right now. Now to qualify for this forbearance, there's a very specific thing, word, that it describes in this bill, and it says that you have to affirm that you were either directly or indirectly affected by this epidemic, or pandemic, sorry. So what does that mean, affirm? It basically just means you just basically have to say, hey look, I was affected in this way, in this way. You don't really have to show any documentation. So it's kind of interesting. So if you have over five units, so this is only for one to four units, if you have over five units of residential property, then it gets into more detail in the bill that explains how you have to prove documentation and you have to go through a much more in detail process to prove that you can get forbearance. Now, if you guys have a one to four unit residential property that's gov that has a government backed loan on it, mortgage, what you could do is your forbearance could be for 120 days. So you, all you have to do is affirm that you were either directly or indirectly affected by the um, epidemic and or pandemic, sorry, I keep saying pan epidemic, pandemic, and you could get 120 days of forbearance. That's four months. Now, it says in there that you can actually, if at the end of that, if you still need more time and you cannot pay, you have to, you could apply for another 120 days on top of the 120 days, so that's eight months where the forbearance, where you don't have to pay your mortgage. So what about fees, guys? So with this, the bill specifically states that your loan officer, or your uh, institution where you got this loan, is not allowed to charge you fees. So there should not be any fees with this. But understand that the loan, the interest that's accruing on all these months are still gonna be applied because you're still gonna have to pay this money back. It's not money that's gone forever. You're gonna have to pay this back at a later time. So it's kind of just delaying the inevitable. So if let's say your, your April payment, you're, you'll get it delayed um, into to the future, but you're still gonna have to pay the interest on that, that month. It's not gonna just go away. So the next question is payback. So when you go to actually pay this money back after your forbearance period is over, how is that gonna work? Well, right now, I think banks are gonna try, at least in the beginning, to say you have to pay a lump sum right after all that four or eight month period is over, in which you don't wanna take that, guys. Don't, don't take that at all. That's not a good idea because in four to eight months, that is a lot of money you're gonna have to pay all at one time at the end. What you're going to want to ask for is an installment option. So basically that's on top of what you would normally pay for your monthly mortgage payment, you would pay a little bit extra and then over time it would pay back the extra that you accrued over the forbearance period. So that has, still has to get ironed out with what's going to happen with that. So once it passes the House of Representatives and it goes through the President, hopefully those that detail in the bill will get more specific and people will understand exactly what it's gonna be for you to pay back this thing. But if it, there is a lump sum, if they make you do a lump sum at the end of this, I don't think that's a good idea. I think maybe you should second guess this forbearance option in the first place, because that's gonna be extremely difficult, especially if you lost your job, or if someone is in a really bad hardship who's probably gonna be using this forbearance, you're not gonna be in a great position in four, eight months to pay that giant lump sum. So now what about credit? Can they report you to the credit bureaus for making a late payment during this forbearance period? So it depends. If you're currently late on your payments, yes, 
they can uh, report you to the credit bureau as being late even in the forbearance period. However, if you're current on your mortgage, to my interpretation of the bill, no, they cannot report you to the credit bureaus if you're late. Well, you're not late. You're during the forbearance period because you're taking this for this special forbearance provision. So that's the deal on that. You guys can go through the bill yourself and see if there's any, um, if you can interpret it differently, but that's how I interpret that part of the bill. So the next question that comes up is, can you qualify for new loans during the forbearance period? Now, it's not very specific in the bill exactly what's gonna happen with this, and maybe they'll revise it going forward, but to my understanding, you shouldn't be able to not qualify for another loan because technically you're in the forbearance period and you're not late, you're just in this special um, provision, but who knows, something might come up now, um, they might make adjustments to this and see how this goes forward where you might have to report to, to another loan uh, officer or another, another institution that you actually are in the forbearance. They might make you do that to see if you're going to qualify. Um, I don't know how this is going to go forward, but that's an interesting thing to look out for in the, in the coming weeks as this, this thing gets revised a little bit further. So now what about insurance and taxes? Well, there was nothing in the bill that specifically spoke about insurance and taxes um, and if you still have to pay those. So I would keep paying these. I would not let these go um, and, and try to for, forbear them or put them in a forbearance because there's nothing explaining that you're allowed to do that. So I would keep paying your, your insurance and your taxes just as you always have been doing. So the next big question is, Jordan, when should I stop paying? Well. In my opinion, you should definitely get something in writing, either a letter, an email, something that could prove that your lender, your specific lender, has told you that you are okay to be involved in the forbearance um, bill or the forbearance option here. So if you don't have that in writing, I would not stop paying your mortgage payments. Because if you stop paying your mortgage payments and just assume, hey, I'm in the forbearance, this, this isn't going to affect me at all, you're wrong. Your lender is going to be upset and they're not going to care because you didn't explain to them what you're doing. So you're going to get a credit ding, you're going to get all the negative consequences that come with not paying your mortgage payment. So make sure in the coming, in the coming weeks when you know start talking to your lenders start bringing up the conversation hey look you know the for you saw the the bill the forbearance part of the bill i would like to apply for that i think it'll be good for me in this situation so make sure they write in an email in writing okay we accept you so and so for this property that you do not have to make your payments for from this date to this date because you are now in the forbearance program so i want to end it off guys with this is this for me should I apply for the forbearance program? So in my opinion, I would not apply for this program um, if you didn't absolutely 100% need it. So if you can make your payments right now, um, if you can, you know, even though if tenants aren't really paying you money or you're in a, a single family house and you, you have some reserves on the side, I would absolutely use your reserves to pay for your mortgage payment. I would not do this unless you absolutely had zero money and you needed to eat for the next three months, you needed that money. Then I would apply for this. So the reason being is these things get a little tricky later on. It, it, it's not all cut, cut and straight as I just explained it to you. Lenders don't, they like to get paid. So people like to get paid. So they're not gonna make it very easy for you to go through this and actually get this forbearance program. So in my opinion, guys, if you are someone who lost your job, you, you, have a, you were at a dual income, you both lost your job, you have no money, um, save for, for this type of situation, go ahead and do this. This is for the American people that actually need this right now. But if you're just trying to defer your payments, eh, I don't really feel like paying for that, it's maybe I could take advantage of this in some way. Don't do that, guys. This is not what that's for. And just to be clear, guys, this is not free money. Again, I, I want to just reiterate it. You are going to have to pay this money back and the interest that comes along with it. So you're just pushing off the inevitable. So like I said, if you can pay it now, pay it now. But if you absolutely cannot pay it now, just keep pushing it, push it back, and then that's what you need. That this, this is a good program for you. And one other thing, guys, if you're not a homeowner and you're a renter, a really good thing right now is for renters, if you can't pay, if you lost your job and you absolutely cannot pay your rent next month, I would you know, make a letter to your landlord, write them a note, make a phone call, do something, but just say, hey, look, I can you know, start the dialogue. I cannot pay my rent for April 1st. Or I, can, I lost my job, I cannot pay the rent 
for the full rent for whatever day. So start the dialogue and say, look, I can pay 25% of the rent this month, and next month I can pay a little bit more. If I get my job back, I can pay a little bit more, but I will pay you, but you, you gotta help me out because this is not gonna work for me. I don't wanna just not pay you. So by starting that dialogue, you're actually benef benefiting yourself because if you just completely stop paying your landlord, there's gonna be issues. There's gonna be major issues. Um, obviously, they could start an eviction, but that's on the, you know, there's things right now where you can't do an eviction, but don't take advantage of that, guys. Don't, don't be like, hey, I'm just gonna not pay and screw the landlord and he can't evict me right now anyway because nothing is, nothing is moving right now and he, can't, he literally cannot evict me right now. Don't do that, guys. Just gonna cause bad, uh, bad karma for you. And don't forget, the landlord has bills to pay himself, so if, if you could pay and work out a deal with, uh, with your landlord, I would highly recommend you just write him a letter, start the dialogue, and start getting on a payment plan with that. So with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I know it's a little bit of a lengthy one, but I hope that you guys are able to take some tips from this and maybe apply them to what you're going through right now. We're all in this together. This is not an easy situation, but hopefully I was able to summarize a little bit of what that 880 page stimulus bill was. But just to be clear, guys, still has to pass the house, still has to get signed off by the president, but they're expected to do that. So we'll see how things are gonna get tweaked with that bill in the coming weeks. So thank you guys so much. Again, my name is Jordan Bach. I'm a real estate agent here on Long Island. If you have any questions, please feel free to DM me or if you want clarification on anything, just let me know. And you guys have a great day.